Hello and welcome back to podcast number 10. We're in double figures. Uh, when I started this a couple of months ago, I honestly didn't think it would take off. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, I've had so many lovely comments from you. Um, and you actually all seem to be really enjoying watching me, which I still can't quite get over. Um, but it is really, really lovely to um, spend time with you. Um, I am finding that I am busier and busier with my knitting and crochet. I think it helps that my husband's away on business at the moment, so quite a few of my evenings, once the kids have been put to bed, have been spent just enjoying watching crappy telly, catching up on podcasts, um, and getting lots of knitting and crochet done. So I've had a few more podcasts. So when he gets back later in the week, we'll see. I might not get quite so many done for you. But anyway, so for those of you who are new, my name's Claire and I run Beautiful Things, which is a craft studio in Brentwood in Essex, where I teach crochet, sewing, dressmaking and lots of different crafts. Um, we have a knitting tutor who works for us because I can't knit, well I can now, but I couldn't knit, um, and she is teaching me alongside many others how to knit, and that is becoming my hobby, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. So this podcast is mainly about crochet and knitting, um, and occasionally the odd bit of sewing, fabric and craft sneaks in. But I do try and keep my sewing videos separate to my podcast so that you can see um, what I get up to on the dressmaking and sewing side of things. So thank you for tuning in if you are new. If you're an existing viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, I will have lots to show you today, things that I've been doing and things that I'm up to. Uh, but if you want to follow what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis, the best place to find me is on Instagram where you'll find me as artyfartymac. And on Facebook, you'll find me at Craft Classes at Beautiful Things. Now, for those of you who've been following for a while, you'll know I mentioned that I have two Facebook pages, one old and one new. And finally, Facebook has decided that they are in the process of merging my two pages. But to do that, they needed to make them both have the same name. So it is incredibly confusing now for any of you new trying to find me to discover which is actually the correct page to come to. So I will tell you, there are two little avatars for my two Facebook pages. One is just a brown circle with my lovely little flowers in, just like pop up at the beginning of some of my videos. And the other one is a white circle with my flowers in and it says on the circle, craft classes are beautiful things. That's the one you want, okay? So that's the one where I am most active. The other one just lays dormant and hopefully in the not too distant future we'll cross over. So, excuse me while I just check my notes. I want to just check I'm not forgetting anything. But the last thing I need to say is we do have a Ravelry group for the podcast where you can go and catch up on each week's podcast so you can um, leave me messages and notes on the things that you've seen or watched um, and it's also a place where if you're taking part in any of our cows or our giveaways um, then all the information that you need is on there so you can find that that's just a beautiful things group on Ravelry. Otherwise, keep liking my posts, please keep commenting below, and please keep hitting that big red subscribe button, and that way you will be notified whenever I post a new video. So let's get started. We're gonna start with FOs. I don't have any. <laughs> well, actually I do. I have some cute little Christmas decorations which I knitted in a knitting class this week, although I'm really sorry, I've left them at work. So I will bring them home and when I do my next podcast I'll show them to you. But they're very sweet. We made little Santas with big fuzzy beards and we used the old fashioned knitting method of wrapping our yarn around our fingers to make big loops. So I remember my grandma making me cardigans in that way. Um, but she must have had an awful lot of patience because Santa had about 12 loops on his beard and it probably took me a good half an hour. <laughs> so yes i'll show you those another day so i haven't got any fo's to show you but i have been really really busy getting on with things so i'm going to start with what's on my hook now the first one to show you is my truly hooked eliza top now this is part of our eliza cow and it's not too late for you to join in if you want to um, we are crocheting the eliza top which is a pattern by truly hooked here um, it's been written by Verity of Truly Hooked Yarns um, and she hand dyes all of her yarns, so she's based um, Nottingham Way I think. 
So I am using, what's it called? This is called Out of My Shell and it's her Sparkle Sock Weight Yarn. So let's see if the camera's going to play ball today. Mm, don't think it likes it. Oh, there we go. So it's really lovely and sparkly. Um, and it's in really luminous colours. So there's like fluorescent pink, fluorescent yellow and blues. Now I've got quite a long way with this, as you can see. So I've got right down, sort of, I'm probably down below my bust now. That's the back that I'm showing you. It's below my bust now. I'm not going to try it on for you. Not yet. Um, but you can see it's doing some really nice pooling here. I am changing the ball of yarn that I use every four rows to stop it from pulling up too much, um, which is what Verity recommended I did. But it's ever such a simple pattern. It's got this lovely kind of scallopy loopy um, few rows around the top and then it's just straight trebles down to the bottom and then more of these scallopy loops um, and then you can put sleeves in as well so this is really lovely it's ever so quick to crochet i know there's quite a few of you who are joining in um, with this particular cow um, it doesn't finish until the end of november so you've still got time to join in um, but just do pop over to the um, group and say that you're taking part and show us the yarn that you're planning on using. You don't have to use truly hooked yarns, um, you can use any four ply um, or sock weight yarn to do this um, and I am doing two prizes, one for people who are using truly hooked yarn and one for people um, who are using alternative yarns. Um, so if you are new to crochet it is a really easy pattern and if you haven't made a garment yet I would strongly suggest it's a really good one to do. It grows ever so ever so quickly and there's lots of people taking part and um, so if you do get stuck you can always pop onto the Ravelry group and ask for help. So that's our Eliza cow. Um, so I'm enjoying that. I've done quite a few rounds of that. That's just a really good one for late at night. It's just I've got to a bit now where it's just straight trebles all the way around. Um, so I'm getting that completed quite quickly and it's growing very quickly. Also on my hook is my contour shawl by Joanna Scrace. So that's this pattern here. I'm doing this in lace weight yarn um, that I picked up at Yarndale a couple of years ago and I haven't still got the um, band for it so I don't know who it was. I have a feeling it might have been for the love of yarn um, but I'm not 100% sure. But this is really coming up brilliantly. I've done lots of this. I love the way it's kind of got this point on one end and then it kind of curls round a little bit um, at the other end. So it's not 100% symmetrical, uh, but it's beautifully working up. Let's see if I can get it to, uh, oh yeah, look, it's really doing, doing its thing tonight. Um, but you can see you've got this lovely ridge on it. I won't tell you too much about it because obviously it is a paid for pattern. Um, but it really is working up beautifully. I'm really, really pleased with it. And it feels, although it's lace, so it's very thin, it feels really squidgy. Um, and I think it's going to look lovely um, as a shawl. So that's growing. Um, I've been working on that quite a bit this week. Again, it's another one. It's good for late at night. The pattern's fairly simple once you get your head around it. You can just repeat it over and over. Um, and it's just doing straight double trebles. <clears throat> so it's nice and easy. This is a little bit cheeky, this next one. It's not strictly on my hook, it's on my mum's hook. <laughs> but mum um, kind of got on that I had um, been working on my granny square cardigan. Um, and she has been busting her scraps too. And she's given me today all these squares that she's done for me. So these can all go towards my cardigan. I really must do the maths and work out how many I need um, so she doesn't go too crazy. But I think there's a good few hundred. So I must say I'm in my kitchen tonight. So sorry about that. It's not particularly crafty behind me. In fact, you can see my cookbooks to my left. A lovely big pumpkin that my daughter went and got from the pumpkin patch this weekend. Um, and my gin collection. Uh, but the light's really good in here. Um, it's nice and bright and it's really dingy in the conservatory. So I've only got this evening to film this podcast because I'm super busy all week. It's now half term here in the UK, so the children are home with me all of next week. So I wanted to get one filmed for you, so you're going to have to put up with the kitchen. Also, what you might hear is thudding in the background, and if you do, that's my elephant of a son in the room upstairs. 
Um, I don't know what he's doing up there right now. I've told him to be quiet, but obviously bumping around on the floor um, doesn't count as noise to him. So I apologise if you can hear that. So that's what's on my hook. So I have been quite busy um, with my hook, but not massively. I'm going to now show you what's on my needles and I'm going to get you to help me make a decision. And I know what the answer is, but I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so I've been knitting my sleeves for my Talisane jumper. I don't know if that's how you say it, but it's a funny one to pronounce. So I've been doing them two at a time. So I've got two balls on the go here. Ooh, they're all a bit tangled up in my bag. So I've been doing them two at a time. You can see they're really working up nicely. These are all the little short rows, which form sort of the cuff, and then they go on to some slightly longer rows. Um, but I realised when I looked at them the other day, I don't know if I can get this to show without it all falling off the needles, I realised if you look here, I've got a big bit of stocking stitch and here I haven't. So I've basically missed out a couple of knit rows here, which is what gives you the ridge. So this is on the cuff. It's my very first garment that I've ever knitted. I've missed two rows. Do I just carry on or do I be good? Take it off the needles and frog it back. But it's... a good 35 rows back it's like two hours of knitting I reckon easy and I really don't know that I can be bothered because no one other than me and obviously all of you now is going to know what I've done so I'm not sure what to do with that one so when I realized I'd done that the other day I kind of parked it for a while I'm also a bit concerned because when I wrap that round my wrist look it's really big and that's fine for a jumper sleeve but the picture looks like it should be, you know, snug round the wrist. Um, but the front and back, when I hold that up against me, that's absolutely fine. The, the gauge is right. So I'm just wondering, well, I'm not worried about it. To be honest, if the sleeves are a bit baggy, I don't care. But um, it's just a bit, seems a bit weird that they're so big. So, yeah, I'm feeling all right about it. We're getting there slowly but surely. I think it will be ready by Christmas, I hope. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Shall I frog that? Or is it really that important? Don't know. What else? Talking about Gage, I want to say a thank you very much to Andrea, who watches my podcast. I mentioned to you that I had knitted a Gage swatch for my cabaret jumper, which I was going to make in this Starcraft sparkly cabaret yarn. And I'd done it on a four mil and it had come up a centimetre bigger than I needed. And I talked to my mum and said, oh, well, let's just go for it anyway. But Andrea commented on that vlog, on the podcast, sorry, and said, don't do it, Claire, please, 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 I urge you, please re-gauge. Um, because it's not just a centimetre on either side. What you've got to realise is that that gauge swatch probably goes across your front maybe ten times. So that's a whole 10 centimetres that you're gaining on the front. And then you'll also gain 10 centimetres on the back. So that's 20 centimetres, which is a lot all the way around your body. So it's all well and good saying you don't mind it being a little bit bigger, but it's going to be considerably bigger. Um, and she's totally right. And thank you, Andrea. I really should have known that. I mean, I'm a dressmaker, so I understand um, how fabric works and adding extra fabric to seam allowances, etc. So really, I should have should have thought about that a bit more. But thank you for alerting me to that because I have paid attention and I have re-swatched. So I'm not going to start this jumper yet. I'm being good. Um, Something has actually jumped ahead of it, but I'm being good. But I didn't just do a regular gauge swatch. I actually researched the best way to do them. And I added two extra stitches on either side and just knitted them. And I did a knit row at the bottom and a knit row at the top um, for two rows. So it meant that I had a really lovely, perfect square of stocking stitch in the middle. And I've gone down to um, a 3.75 um needle which i believe is the old old nines 
here old English money um, I don't quite understand all of that to be honest um, and I'm much much happier with it it's really nice it's perfect it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters uh, so I know that obviously I've got a bit of a tighter gauge and I need to knit my jumper on 3.75s so I need to go and buy some 3.75s now uh, and I'm actually not going to do that yet because that's going to stop me from casting the jumper on and I did start to worry that I was getting castronitis and I don't want that to happen but I have been good so thank you thank you thank you Andrea um, I do love all of you because you all leave such lovely comments um, and you sometimes really do get me thinking about what I do and why I'm doing it so I'm very very grateful for that comment it has made me think what else have I got to show you aha my Swedish socks these are coming up brilliantly I made the heels on these the other day so I used the fish lips kiss heel which I've talked about in previous podcasts it's a really lovely pattern it's paid for pattern on Ravelry it's only a dollar or two dollars or something silly so go and buy it because it's very good I'm not going to tell you any more but it is very easy once you get your head around it and as you can see I have started to knit the foot so I'm just on the plain vanilla section this is knitting up so quickly I was at my mum and dad's for dinner tonight and I've done I was on the green bit when I got to them I had probably only knitted for half an hour so I must have done about nine or ten rows um, in half an hour so that's good so I reckon they could be an FO fairly soon uh, they will just have to get the foot finished and the toe done and the last thing oh my goodness this for a start is in my lovely new rabbit project bag check this out isn't it lovely look at this fabric now this is quilted this project bag it's got a box bottom and it's a drawstring bag the whole thing is quilted and I made this this week I'd put a call out to you in my last podcast to say where can I get really fun and funky project bags from and I realised you know what let's make one so I took the regular drawstring bag pattern that I use for all my simple project bags I made it a little bit bigger and I played around and I quilted it to give it a bit more sustenance and I also put this um, strap on it and I really love this but is because it's quilted even though I up the size of it it's still not really that big it's fine for you know I've got one ball of yarn in here in a project so it'd be fine for more than socks so a shawl project shawl size it would probably be all right but for a jumper or anything it wouldn't really be big enough so I have already cut some fabric I've actually doubled the dimensions that I used for this and I'm going to see how it comes up I have a feeling it might come up too big it could be the ginormous size jumper bag um, but we'll see so I'll try and get that made um, in the next couple of weeks and I'll share that with you um, on my next podcast or two but inside here my as I said earlier my husband's away at the moment for business and um, my children have been staying at grandma and grandpa's this weekend because I was working all day yesterday so I took advantage of letting them stay over one more night went out for dinner with my girlfriends last night and then today I had all morning and all early afternoon at home on my own. So I ignored the housework and absolutely everything. I stayed in my pyjamas until three o'clock and I cast on my void shawl. And I'm so pleased with myself. I followed a pattern, but like a really, not hard apparently, but to me a really tricky pattern. So check it out. Look at that. That is the first two pattern repeats done. Um, it's cast on in the middle and then you work your way out. I'm not going to tell you anymore because, again, it's a paid for pattern. But I am so, so proud of myself. Um, I've got um, a, I keep umming, sorry. I've got a lifeline in here that I put in at the end of the first pattern repeat because I figured if I balls it up, at least I've only got to pull it back eight rows. And I'm going to move that up now before I start the next pattern repeat. Just for a little while until I get my head round it. But there are one, two, three, four new stitches in this. I've never done before. 
So I had to go off and look them up on YouTube um, and find some tutorials to help me. Um, but I did it slowly but surely. I knitted the first eight rows and realised I understood it, but it was really messy. I wasn't very happy with it. So although it had taken me about an hour and a half, I did frog it right back and start again because I thought, you know, it was a bit more of a learning curve for me. So I'm really, really pleased with it. So I'm going to do some more of that tonight. So I should just say, this is the Void Shawl and it's by Melanie Berg. There you go. So it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I think it was about $6.50, something like that. It's the shawl that Katie from Inside Number 23 has recently made. I'll try and pop a picture up here for you. Um, and she wears it all the time. And every time she's got it on in her podcast and her videos, she always looks so cosy. Um, and I'd really, really, really want my own. So this is my challenge to myself. I'm really, really proud of myself because actually I don't think it can't get any harder okay I could make a few more mistakes but I know what to do now so there is absolutely no reason why I should have finished this shawl I'm also loving that using four and a half mil needles I should say though I'm using the um symphony knit pro symphony on a fixed 120 cable they're four and a half mils but that and a DK weight yarn, it just grows really quickly and it's really nice to knit because I'm used to fiddly little socks, fiddly little sock yarns. So I'm making this for our Misty Cow. This is James C. Brett Misty Yarn. And if you haven't watched my last podcast, then please do go back and have a look. We are doing a Misty Cow, so you can knit or crochet anything you like in any of the James C. Brett Misty Yarns. And the reason we're doing it... Quite a few people said, oh, you know, why are you using yucky acrylic yarn? Um, but the reason that we're doing it is because we are trying to support our local wool shop, Tilly's Wool Wagon in Battlesbridge in Essex. And she is a very small little wool shop, but we want to keep our local yarn shops alive. So this is one of the yarns that she stocks, and I've been in and I felt it and I squished it and I liked it and I loved it. It's £2.50 a ball, so it's not expensive. So it's ideal if, like me, you want to challenge yourself to something new um, that you think you could well muck up and you don't want to use expensive yarns to do that and make those mistakes. So what you need to do, you can still take part. There's no deadline on our Misty Cow. It's going to go right through into the new year. If you like the yarn, and I'll put a picture up here of all the six colours that you can get. If you like the yarn, you need to contact Gina, who owns Tilly's Wool Wagon. I'll put her details in the down bar below. And you need to order your yarn. You can either go in and buy it from her shop, or if you live um, anywhere else in the UK, then she'll post it to you. And she'll tell you how much you need to do whatever project it is you want to do. And if you live internationally, you can still take part because I am able to ship that to you. I can pick it up from Gina and I can ship it to you at a really, really reasonable rate. Um, and we can get it to you quite quickly because I have access to couriers. So you don't have to worry too much about crazy postage prices either. We would love people to just join in and take part. As I say, you can make whatever you like. You just have to knit or crochet something using the James C. Brett Misty yarn and it has to be bought from Tilly's Wool Wagon and there's lots of chatter on the Ravelry group page so do pop over and have a look. So when I finished filming this tonight I will get it edited and up and then I'm intending doing another eight rows on my void jewel. So dead 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 tough can you tell I'm really proud of myself. Um, so I'm just going to pause for a second because we're coming up to that half hour mark and I know Mr. Camera doesn't like filming more than that and I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, so in my last podcast I did mention that we were trying to support local wool shops and I mentioned a wool shop in South End. Now I did think I'd say to you that very, very sadly that wool shop I've now remembered was called Gades. And it's a lovely yarn shop in South End, but unfortunately, one of my regular viewers and pupils, Viv, uh, visited Gates last week, and she informs me that sadly they are closing down. So there's another reason that we must, must, must support our local wool shops. We've got to get them up and running again and surviving. It is really important. It's something I'm extremely passionate about. It's very sad to see yet another local business um, go under. 
Unfortunately, the rates uh, that the councils are charging for shops and things are so high that it really is just pricing people out. That coupled with the fact that so much yarn is available online from all the big companies online that people aren't necessarily supporting their local wool shops. So if you have a local wool shop in your town, please go in, go and say hi. Um, even if you just pick up a really cheap ball of double knit, that's a little bit of something going into their till and it will help them and keep them afloat. I am hopefully going to start a new crochet and knitting club in the new year. And what I want to try and do, although we don't have many knitting and crochet shops, is I want to try and support some of our other local independent businesses. So we do have lots of really lovely restaurants and cafes and local tea rooms and things like that and garden centres etc near where we live. So I'm going to try and set something up on a monthly basis where we go to a different place every month for a regular get together, sort of a crafty nitty natter thing. Uh, so again, watch this space. But if you've got any ideas of places that we can visit uh, within the vicinity of Brentwood that you're interested in trying out, please let me know and I will get in touch. But it is very important to me that they are small independent businesses that we support and not the big chains. I don't have a problem with chain stores, obviously they have to exist, um, but it is really important that we all do try to shop local. So that was that. So acquisitions, I have a couple of acquisitions for you. The first one isn't amazingly exciting and I'm afraid it is acrylic again, um, but my mum had two balls more of cabaret which I love, but in this gorgeous black and grey and silver colour. She'd bought this because she was going to try knitting the hitchhiker in it, but she found that actually it was just a bit too fluffy and it didn't show off um, the pattern very well. But I thought this would look gorgeous um, to make another of the Joanne's Grace contour shawls in. So my lace weight, it is designed as a shawl to be done in DK. Um, so I figured it would be really super squishy and lovely and soft. And I absolutely love my road trip scarf that I have in this cabaret yarn so my mum sold me her two balls of wool <laughs> so I will make a contour shawl with those at some point the other thing my favorite dyer little boo yarns is back from a little break and she had a market night last Sunday so both my mum and I have bought yarn from little boo now unfortunately I was going through all of the different pictures with her we were actually out last Sunday night so we stopped in the middle of a dinner dance and we're going through my phone in a really bad internet connection looking at all the pictures about eight o'clock and the one that I really liked which is a kind of rainbow colour but a dusky rainbow sold the minute I literally pointed it to my mum and someone had commented and it had gone but anyway I got this one and it's called time to party so I got two skeins and again it's my favourite it's a sparkle sock weight and it's in this lovely kind of magenta, purple, there's a lovely jadey green, turquoise in there. There's, um, let's just get one going on the go. You can see there's like a pinky, lavendery colour. And then this lovely tealy, greeny blue. So there's some beautiful colours in there. I don't 100% know what I'm going to make with it. I think I probably might make another Eliza top. Uh, the other one that I've got obviously is very, very leery and very luminous, but I'm not sure. But I love Little Boo yarns and Deb's been away for quite some time. She's been poorly and she doesn't dye all the time. So when she does, you have to grab yarn because it could be months before you get any more. So I got those two and mum got, I've kept hold of them because I wanted to show you. Mum got these ones and it's called At The Disco. And this is really lovely. Again, it's Sparkle Sock. So there we go, you can see it's this beautiful royal blue, black, purple and hot pink. So I'll just take one to show you a bit more. And it's really lovely. So it's got this gorgeous deep purples in with the lovely magenta colour and turquoise blue. But then the black in it runs through this beautiful sparkly black. So she's planning on knitting herself a hitchhiker. So she knitted my hitchhiker for me in my fruit salad colourway. So she's going to knit herself one in this. And she's got a lovely bright pink coat and a black coat. So it will go really nicely with that. So her sock yarn, for those who are interested, is a merino and nylon sparkle sock. 
and there's 400 meters um, in each skein. So this is her card. There you go. So it's little. Woo! No, it was there. There you go. Little boo yarns. So I like the way she punches her poor little girl's eye out <laughs> on the logo. <laughs> So again, mum knows what she's doing with hers. I don't know what I'm going to do with mine. It'll probably go in the stash um, and I'll get round to it eventually. So it was acquisitions. And then I've just got general chatter for you. So it's a shortish podcast today. General chatter, I want to ask you, what do you wash your handmade socks in? So I've now got four pairs of hand knitted socks and none of them can go in the washing machine. They've all been worn and they're all in my washing basket and they all need to be washed. Do I just hand wash them in like travel soap or is there a special uh, detergent that I can buy to wash my socks in? So if you can let me know, please. Ideally, something I can get in the UK. Um, I know I've got quite a lot of international viewers, but I would like to know how you wash your socks and what you wash them in, please. The other thing is our favourite swap. Again, this was launched on my last podcast. If you haven't watched it, you can go back and find out all about it. The favourite swap is sign up until the end of October. So Monday the 31st, so you've got a week. Um, and you will want to be sending your swap partner. The swap partners will be notified at the beginning of November. You want to be sending your swap partner something handmade something yarn related, something yarn, so a little ball of something or a skein of something, it doesn't have to be expensive. The yarn related can be something like a stitch marker or a needle gauge or a row counter, something like that. And something handmade can be anything you like and then a fun little something. Now it's called the favourite swap because you need to tell me what your favourite thing is. So I'm going to give you an example. Your favourite thing might be owls and you might be a crocheter. So you'll tell me if you're a knitter or a crocheter. And on the 1st of December when everybody sends their parcels out, you will receive in the post something handmade, some yarn, a yarn related something and a fun little something. And all of those items will be focused around owls. So it could be that your swap partner makes you a project pouch uh, with owly fabric. She might send you a nice ball of yarn in kind of browns and creams and owly colours. And she might send you a little owl stitch marker. And she could send you a little notebook with a picture of an owl on it for her something fun. So it's all related around your favourite things. So full details are in the groups, on the group on Ravelry, sorry. <laughs> you need to email me by the 31st of October with the information and the answers to the questions that we've asked for. And I will send you your swap partner on the 1st or 2nd of November. And then you've got a month to get all your bits and pieces together and ship them out on the 1st of December. So it will be really, really, really good fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody sends. If you are international, that's absolutely fine. You can take part. If you're in the UK and you don't want an international swap partner because you don't want the postage, that's absolutely fine. Just let me know in the email and I'll make sure when I pair everybody up that you get people that are suitable for you. So that's our favourite swap and I'd love for you all to take part. I've already got quite a few of you all signed up. I've put the information in the down bar below, but it's also on our Ravelry group. So have a look for it on there. So, da -da 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 -da. two, three more things. For those of you who watch all of my videos and all of my vlogs, you'll see that a couple of days ago, I filmed the seamstress tag and the seamstress tag was set up by Holly from Holly Sews so that everybody who was a dressmaker could film a video answering questions about themselves and use the seamstress tag as their title. But it meant then if you were looking for other sewers that you could type in seamstress tag on YouTube and watch all the videos from all the sewers. And it was such a good idea, a really, really good idea. And it's really taken off. So I thought what I might do, because there isn't a similar one as far as I as far as I know, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to go out there saying it's new when it's not, um, but there isn't something for us yarn lovers. So in the next couple of days, I'm going to film a yarn lovers video 
with some questions for yarn lovers and watch out for that. You can then hopefully take part two if you're a fellow podcaster. Um, and if not, obviously it will give you the opportunity to go out and look for other podcasts and other vloggers who you may not have already discovered. But do please let me know if I'm going to make an absolute fool of myself if something already exists that's similar <laughs> because I don't want to do that. So comment in the down bar below. So I'm also going to do another live session on my Facebook page. I did a live session about three or four weeks ago now where I did a bit of a crochet clinic so people could ask me questions about crochet um, if they were stuck on particular things or had questions that they wanted to ask me. It went really, really well. I had lots of people watching. It was really interactive and lots of fun. So I wanted to do another live session. So I've decided that I'm going to do that this Wednesday coming. So that is Wednesday the 26th of October and I'm going to go live at 9 o'clock p.m. That's UK time. So it's going to be an Ask Me Anything and what I'm going to do obviously is ask question, answer questions live. So you'll be able to type your question in the comments box under the video while you're watching and I'll be able to answer your questions. And you can ask me anything. Um, anything sewing related, anything dressmaking, crafty, crochet, um, and I will try and do my best to answer your questions. It doesn't have to be troubles. You could just be incredibly nosy and want to know a bit more about me. Um, you might want to know, I don't know, what I like to eat for my tea. I really don't mind. Uh, you can ask me anything, within reason, obviously. Um, <laughs> But if you can't make it to the live session, then by all means, I'll put a thread up in the Ravelry group for Ask Me Anything and you can put the questions in there. And then you can go back and the live video will stay on my Facebook page. So even when I've finished recording, it will stay there and you can go back and check it out um, a few days later and I will hopefully have answered your question for you. So that's this Wednesday, the 26th of October at 9pm on my Facebook page. So I really hope to see some of you there. So the very last thing to tell you is business related. So if you've had enough and you don't want to know about um, my latest product that I'm launching, I will say bye for now. Come back hopefully and see my next podcast. But for those of you who are interested, just for a couple of minutes, we have just launched our latest semi-virtual crochet course and kit. I'll put a picture up here. It's our Wing It With Wool Tea Cozy course. So it's available for pre-orders now and the first 20 people to pre-order will receive a limited edition handmade teapot stitch marker, which I've made myself, and a little tea related gift and that will come with their kits. The kits are being shipped out at the beginning of November and you will have access to your online course from the beginning of November too. So if you want to find out more about our semi-virtual crochet courses, then you can visit www.semivirtualcourses.com where you can buy our beginners course, our intermediate course, our Amigurumi Cacti Garden course, and also pre-order our Wing It With Wool tea cozy course and the reason we call it wing it with wool is because you will learn how to make a tea cozy to fit absolutely any size and shape pot so it is a really really good course and thrown in there for good measure is also how to make all the lovely flowers that adorn the top so it's perfect for anybody who already knows their basic crochet stitches and is absolutely easy peasy for anybody who really does know what they're doing and just wants to make a tea cosy with me and have a little bit of fun. So I think that's everything for now. I haven't got much more to tell you, as I say. I don't know how much I'll get done this week because hubby is back on Thursday, but it is half term. So I don't know how much I will get to show you. And as always, I only podcast when I've actually got something to tell you rather than trying to come up with things on a weekly basis. So I will say see you later and I'll be back with you soon. As always, please feel free to leave me comments below. Take care. Have a good week. Bye.